Tuesday, November the 14th, and this is Sunrise with Wayne and Pat. Almost the middle of the month of November. Can you believe that? It's flying. It seems like November just started a couple of weeks ago. I know. Now it's facing the end. In a couple of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we'll have to go through Thanksgiving before we get to that point. But hello there. Welcome to Sunrise. Glad you're with us today, and it's another lovely week. Temper we're, we're in the fall, and it sure feels like it. It's uh, uh, cool nights, not cold, cold now like it was last over the weekend. Yeah, but that was some chilly weather. Saturday was, wow, that was a murderous day. <laughs> but the, as we, you know, we mentioned yesterday, the Veterans Day Parade went off real well. And, uh, you know, those, those folks, the, the uh, Wayne County Veterans and Patriots Coalition, they worked so hard. To, uh, to make that parade work well. And it was, it was, they had more entries than they've ever had before in that parade. So uh, we move on to, uh, to Thanksgiving now. What are our hours for Thanksgiving? Well, before that, won't you have the Veterans Day Parade soon? Oh, I'll have the Veterans Day Parade video. Uh, that'll be coming up. Express Communication has sent it to me. And we'll have that uh, possibly as early as tomorrow. Possible. In fact, no, wait a minute. What's today? Today's Tuesday. I may have it today. I'll have it today. It'll be on today. So stay tuned for that. That'll be on the Veterans Day Parade. We'll be with us today on Wayne Goldsboro Television. That's exciting. It is. That's right. So if you were able to attend it, now you can rewatch it. And if you missed it, then you get to see you it. You get to see it. That's right. Um, we are closing to observe Thanksgiving holidays. Mm hmm. The County of Wayne government offices will be closed Thursday and Friday, which is the 23rd and 24th. Thanksgiving's on a Thursday this year, is that right? Yes, Wayne. But we also have some of our um, county offices that have a little different schedule than some of us. All branches of the Wayne County Public Library will be closing Wednesday, the 22nd at 6 p.m and they will remain closed Thursday and Friday. Okay. So they will reopen back up on Saturday the 25th. Got it. The Wayne County Landfill will be open on Wednesday the 22nd. This is a normal closing day for them, but they will yeah. be open on Wednesday. Normally they're closed on Wednesday. That's correct. So, okay, they're open yes. Wednesday. They will also be closed on Thursday the 23rd, mm -hmm. and they will reopen on Friday oh, the 24th. So instead of being closed on Wednesday, they're going to be closed on Thursday? Yes. Okay. Got it. All convenience centers will be closed Wednesday and Thursday. Oh, okay. So it's just the landfill only that Land. is open on Wednesday. And then the centers will be open on Friday. Convenience centers. The convenience centers. Right. But so will the landfill. And so will the landfill. Right. Everything returns to regular on Friday. That's right. Friday and Saturday. And then the Wayne County Services on Aging, which is the Peggy M. Seeger Senior Center, right. they will be closed Thursday through Saturday. Okay. Thursday, so Friday, and Saturday. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Okay. okay. Good. That is correct. All right. All right. We have a special day today. Do we? Oh, today's special for several reasons, in fact. Today is special because today is International Girls Day. So if you're a girl, ma'am, it's your day, internationally speaking. It's also International Selfie Day, and that's sponsored selfie. by... Selfie. Selfie. Like our cell phone yeah, like, selfie? Like. Yeah, how do you do that, Wayne? <laughs> like that. But that's sponsored by the Diabetes Foundation. Today's also Loosen Up, Lighten Up Day. That's good advice. Mm. Loosen Up, Lighten Up. It's also American <laughs> National American Teddy Bear Day. Do you have a teddy bear? Not now. <laughs> Did you? My have. I was... It wasn't recent. It was a pretty good while back. I was like f three or four years old. You know why it's called a teddy bear? Why, Wayne? No, it's real. 
It's real. This is real. Can you tell I'm a little nervous here? I know. Well, I, I know. You don't know what to expect. But it was actually the real reason is because it was named for President Teddy Roosevelt. Oh. Theodore. Yeah. I don't know why they didn't call it Theodore. <laughs> because then they, everybody would have thought it had been named after the beaver, whose first name was Theodore. But Teddy Roosevelt is, was president when the teddy bear came into prominence here in America. And so they, they named it the teddy bear. Okay. Oh, a little history. A little history. It's really interesting. <laughs> Pardon me. Okay, today is also National Spicy Guacamole Day. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. It's, um, it's a National Pickle Day. Today is National Pickle Day. We should be celebrating with Mount Olive Pickle. There you go. Yeah, where's Lynn? Lynn, it's National Pickle Day. Yeah, let's celebrate. <laughs> Throw a pickle at somebody. Yeah. Okay, today is also National Young Readers Day, Operating Room Nurse Day. Boy, they do it. They, I'm telling you, I couldn't be a nurse. No, Much you less. couldn't. <laughs> you do not have no patience. Well, see, if I was a nurse, I'd have patients. No, you wouldn't. Yes, I would. I'd have. Then, well, yeah, you'd have a bunch, but. I'd have a bunch of patients. <laughs> but I don't know if they'd all make it or not. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> today, 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 that's today. Yeah, that's right. Operating room nurse day. <sighs> oh, you mean that kind of patients? Never mind. Okay, today, here's today's trivia question. <laughs> Everybody's familiar, most people are familiar with the, the movie 1939 starring Judy Garland and a bunch of other people. Some really wonderful, fine actors in this movie. The Wizard of Oz. Yes. The Wizard of Oz. Uh, the Cowardly Lion. You remember the Cowardly Lion? Yes. <laughs> I'm telling you now. That was Bert Lahr. Bert Lahr was his name. He was the Cowardly Lion. Yeah. Anyway, he, uh, he had two parts in that movie, as did all the other characters, the Cowardly Lion, the Tin Man, and the, and the Scarecrow. They all had two parts. Burt Law was the Cowardly Lion, and what other part did he play in the movie? Now, this is not an easy question. Okay, what do you have, ma'am? Just a reminder that the WA Foster Center is, will have the um, Community Fun Day. That is this Saturday. Oh boy. And it begins at 12 o'clock until 2. 12 till 2. Yes, and it's a free event. Mm -hmm. Then also this Saturday at the Wayne Center, we mm -hmm. have the ECA Christmas Bazaar. Really? Yes. That's this week? That's this week. Whoa. In. In? <laughs> this weekend. Oh, this weekend. Yes. Beginning at 10 until 2. Stop by the Wayne Center, and you can find unique and affordable gifts for you on your Christmas list. No, that's true. That's right. Also, at the Holiday Arts Market, at the at, at the uh, Wayne County uh, Arts Council. Arts Council of Wayne County. Arts County, the Arts Council of Wayne County. I never can get that right, <laughs> Garner Pat. Never can get that in order. You know the correct order, right? Allie Wayne said that. But uh, at the uh, at the Arts Council of Wayne County, they also have unique. One-of-a-kind gifts, as a matter of fact, starting at about five bucks and going on up from there. You can spend as little or as much as you like at the Arts Council of Wayne County. They have some beautiful one-of-a-kind objects. Some are really nice artwork, and some are just knickknacks, patty wax, that kind of thing. So that's at uh, 100 something uh, North John Street. 102 North John Street, downtown that's Goldsboro. That's right. Uh huh. At 102 North John Street. Anyway, the holiday art market open, open for the holidays, and you can find some, as I said, unique, one-of-a-kind gifts there for your holiday giving, as well as for the weekend, this weekend, the 18th. Yes. For the, what you said. The ECA Christmas Bazaar. That's it. Yeah, that's, and they have unique gifts as well. Yeah, great time of year. I love this time of year. Yes. Yes. Talking about holidays, we have Downtown Lights Up that will start next Tuesday. Can you believe that? Make sure you're on the City Hall steps at 5 o'clock when the mayor of the of city of Goldsboro flips the switch. Make sure you enjoy the entertainment, the holiday characters, the trolley rides. That's Mayor Al Chucklin. Wait a minute. The Chuck city. Allen will sweep the flitch. Yes. On the uh, lights uh, downtown. Lights yes. up. 
Um, while you're waiting on your trolley rides, you can watch a video, you can ice skate. Just remember, ice skating is $5. All other events are free. That's right. And if you missed out on the North Carolina Symphony at the Paramount Theater, you missed out on the North Carolina Symphony. They sold out. Boom. Just like that. Told you. That's right. They sold out fast. They sold out we quick. We mentioned it, what, Friday and by Saturday it yeah. was sold out? Yeah, it was. Well, I don't know. Was it that quick? Yeah. It was quick. I know that. Anyway, uh, uh, unless somebody drops out and can't show up, you might want to go and stand in line at the box office because there'll be a line for some people waiting to get into this. But it's a wonderful show. Next time you'll know that you need to buy early. Get them, or get them early, but they're sold so out. As soon as you see it advertised. That's right. Go get your tickets in. That's get exactly it, get right. Get it, get it, get it. See, what else is going on downtown? Now, let's go. Oh, yeah, we've got the trolley rides, right? Did you mention that? Mm -hmm. You did. Yeah. Didn't? yeah, I know you did. Yeah, okay. What else? We got and they on? begin at 5 30. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll want to take a jacket with you for that because even though this is, you know, it may be warm this time of year, uh, the night air tends to be rather cool and it might get a little breezy downtown Goldsboro. So you want to stay nice and warm and toasty and uh, somewhere along the line, there'll be some hot chocolate available. It'll just be a great seasonal evening. Sure. Great for the youngsters and uh, and the rest of us as well. And That's you know, Santa Claus may even be there. Really? He may. If you've been good. Oh, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> well, you, that knocks you out, right? Yeah, it does. I forget <laughs> that. Well, if you miss Santa Claus at the... Um, downtown lights up we do have some christmas parades coming up wayne so maybe you can get be good between now and then and you can get to see him again i really have to work at that okay I know, really. what do we have we have our first christmas parade is in seven springs this will be their first one since hurricane matthew yes um this will be november the 18th beginning at three o'clock so make sure you go and support the town of seven springs yes excellent i hope you do and then our next ones, we have three in one day. We have Mount Olive, which is December the 2nd at 10 o'clock. We have Fremont at 1 o'clock. And we have the City of Goldsboro at 4 o'clock. Mm. That's a lot of Christmas parades. It is. So 10, 1, and 4. Yes, sir. That's awesome. almost Santa like, Claus will be worn out by the time he gets done with those three parades. That's almost a Dr. Pepper commercial. You remember that? Drink Dr. Pepper at 10, 2, and 4. <laughs> This is at 10, 1, and 4. Okay. We're talking about uh, Dr. Santa Claus here. Dr. Claus will be in uh, the uh, parades at uh, 10, 1, and 4. That's right. In Fremont? Starting at Mount Olive, going to meant. Fremont, and then he'll come to Goldsboro. Mount Olive, Fremont, and Goldsboro. And okay. then on Sunday, he will be in Pikeville. Oh, really? At 3 o'clock. Man, he gets around, doesn't he? And then we'll give him a little break. And okay. he won't come back until December the 10th to Eureka. At 3 o'clock. Eureka's is December 10th. Yes. All right. A lot of Santa Claus going on. Yeah, there. they're all spread out there. Okay, starting with uh, Seven Springs, November 18th, which is this Saturday. Yes. It's Christmas time. It is. Hey, whoa. Okay, and then December 2nd, and then December 3rd, and then December 10th. That's right. Whew. Okay, great. All right, what else do we have here? Don't forget the Race Across America. You actually talked ah. to Tanya and Emily Tucker during the Veterans Day Parade. I did. I did. And it's so easy to donate. It's only $15 to place a wreath on the grave of a soldier or a military person from here in Wayne County who's buried here in Wayne County. Now, here's the thing. These are live wreaths. They're not... And they're shipped in here by an 18-wheeler, and they're not—they're uh, beautiful wreaths. They're large, beautiful wreaths for only $15, and these wreaths go on these these graves of these uh, uh, sol uh, soldiers, military personnel who passed on. Uh, those folks from Wayne County who served in the military, uh, and I want you to to do what you can to help out here. They're only $15 a piece. You contact. In fact, I'll run this again. Be looking for the video of Tanya and Emily Tucker, the address and, the, and all the information you need is on there. But um, it's... Well, they can go on Facebook and probably find it easier. But you know, you could probably, I'm guessing now, you could probably just go on Facebook and find it easier uh, on the Facebook page, which is... Um, Wayne County Government, which NC. I, I believe it's Wayne County Government, NC, 
or North Carolina. NC. NC, uh, and you can get that information there. Yeah. Okay. And the deadline is November 27th. You want to get all that done before November 27th. That's two weeks or less. So you need to do that right away. Go ahead and commit and make a decision about this because a thousand wreaths is their goal. One thousand wreaths is the goal. So look for the video and then go online to um, Facebook, uh, Wayne County Government NC. There. This Veterans Day has passed, yeah. but the Goldsboro Family YMCA has an offer for veterans and first responders, and they're actually calling it Veterans and First Responders Week. Oh, oh, that's great. Yes, it actually started um, on the 11th. Okay. And it will run all the way through the 18th, which is this Saturday. Yeah, okay. Any veteran and first responders can go to the Family Y and enjoy any of the... Amenities. Yes, for free. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you mean like the... <laughs> like the weight room and yes. like the exercise machines and like the swimming yes. pool. My words just I know, froze I know. there. My words freeze all the time. They're cold words. I have cold words. We appreciate you all veterans, it says here, active duty military and first responders. Military and first responders. Active duty military and first responders, all veterans. Uh, you're all welcome to come to the YMCA, Goldsboro Family Y, for the week of, uh, of November 11th through Which November. Which was last Saturday. Which is now through I mean, the end yes. of this week. Yes. Yeah, that's this week. Now to the end of this week for free. Uh, I'm so glad you repeated all that. Goldsboro Family Y, why? Why? <laughs> well, I just because, well, you know, the truth, I wasn't paying attention, so I, <laughs> so I needed he to do it. He admitted it on well, TV. Uh, oh, so are we on TV? So... It's their way, the Family Wise way of saying thank you for your service. GoldsboroFamilyWise.org is their website. Pre please bring <laughs> employer <laughs> ID. <laughs> for f please, please. <laughs> please, please. <laughs> please bring employer ID. ID. Why would you bring your employer ID? Well, it's probably for the first responders. Oh. Just to show that uh. you are fire department rescue. Okay. That makes Police, sense. Police. Okay. Sheriff. Right. Got you. First responders. Bring your employer ID with you. Okay. Excellent. All right. Go ahead. What's next? How about we go to our interview? How about we go to our interview now? We're going to do that, and then we're going to do something else. And after we do the first one, we'll do the second one, and then we'll be back after that. How's that? Is that all right? We're talking to Selena Beeman. Is that we correct? Uh, sure. We're going to talk to Selena Beeman. That's correct. Selena Beeman is the ship counselor at the Peggy M. Seeger Senior Center on East Ash Street. All kinds of great. You know, the, we're in, the, we're in the, that period right now. That Medicare period where you need to uh, need to sign up, open look over your plan. Thank you. Open enrollment plan is what's going on right now, so you need to pay attention to that. All right, here we go. Let's go to Selena. Today we're at the Senior Center on East Ash Street in Goldsboro, the Peggy M. Seeger Senior Center. And you know, we go here quite a bit, and we have had a change in personnel here. We have uh, Selena Beeman is with us this morning. Hey, Selena. How are you, Wayne? I'm okay. I appreciate you talking with us. Now, you are, what do you, what do, you do here now? What's your title? I am the Information and Options Counselor. So All right. I, what does that mean? What do you do? Uh, <laughs> I kind of help guide people um, in resources in the community so when they have a need for things, um, we try to connect them with the resources in the community and we do have some limited resources here that we can help with but mainly connecting them with the agencies and the people that can assist them that's that's really got to be a great job yes you've got to really enjoy this it's rewarding it's very rewarding yeah i, I can imagine occasionally maybe there's a little it's troublesome it's a little frustrating at times but you dig through and you're able to you're able to help people yes for the most part yeah. yes right. um, so you're not only uh, the Medicare connection you're not only the ship connection you do a little bit of everything here. a little bit of everything okay. I am the 
um, ship coordinator for the county. Okay. Um, help assist the uh, ship volunteers in mm -hmm. uh, during open enrollment and doing the outreach to the community to inform them about Medicare and the open enrollment and um, the opportunity to apply for extra help mm -hmm. with Social Security and if there is a need for them to apply for other services through the Department of Social Services, mm -hmm. we kind of help navigate with that kind of stuff. Wow, okay. Now, tell me about SHIP. I mean, we all know about Medicare, but where does SHIP fall in line with all that? Is that over Medicare? Does SHIP oversee Medicare or does Medicare oversee SHIP? How does that work? Well, or is there any connection at all? There is a connection as far as SHIP is through the North Carolina Department of Insurance. Okay, so that's the state health insurance something something? State health. The North Carolina <laughs> Senior Information Program. Senior Health Information. Program. Oh, okay. Senior Health insurance. Information Insurance Information Program. Senior Health insurance information program. Selena, you got to help me out here. Come on. <laughs> okay. The, okay. Okay. The North Carolina Department of Insurance Seniors Health Insurance Information Program, SHIIP SHIP. That is correct. Got it. All right. And while it's in North Carolina, it's also a national program. Okay. But what we do with SHIP is help people that are new to Medicare or mm. already on Medicare navigate the system to um, assist with enrolling in prescription drug plans, um, Medicare Advantage plans. We can help do comparisons with supplemental plans for their to their Medicare, mm -hmm. um, and we assist with the low income applications mm -hmm. to help with uh, paying for their supplement. Our <laughs> five, four. <laughs> Three, two, one. We also we assist with helping people with the applications through Social Security to mm -hmm. apply for extra help to pay for their drug plan. Mm -hmm. And in turn, that also alerts the Department of Social Services if there is a need for assist, additional assistance. It automatically sends an application to them. This is a whole lot of stuff here. Yes, it well, is. Well, let me ask you a question now. <clears throat> Keep it simple, please. I'm a simple, I've got a simple mind. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, let's not get in the weeds here, but I wanted to ask you uh, about Medicare. Mm -hmm. And very simply, mm -hmm. it would probably be easier to, uh, to ask you who would not qualify for Medicare rather than who would. Well, what are the qualifications if, if, you, if you're not qualified to, to have Medicare? What, is that easier or can you tell me who qualifies for Medicare? Anyone that is of age. Um, most people have to be 65 before they can enroll in Medicare, mm -hmm. but as years go on, mm -hmm. the retirement age gets a little higher, so mm -hmm. some people is 66, um, but primarily 65. Well, right primarily 65. Okay, we're going to count down again. Sorry. <clears throat> Look, I we'll do this. Go, we'll go with 65. Every day I have to start over many okay. times. So this, okay. this is every day. Okay. Five, and okay, we'll just say most people 65. Mm -hmm. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. Most people are 65 whenever they're eligible for Medicare, mm. unless they have been disabled. Um, oftentimes, if a person is disabled, they are eligible for Medicare mm -hmm. prior to turning 65. Okay. So we can assist uh, that population as well. Okay. Well, that's pretty simple. So we help people new to Medicare, mm -hmm. people that are already on Medicare, mm -hmm. um, when during open enrollment, which is October 15th through December the 7th, mm -hmm. we look at drug plans. We look at Medicare Advantage plans to see if people need to make a change. Medications change, so sometimes you do have to change your plan. Yeah. Sometimes you don't, but it's always best to look at it every year. Okay, I want to talk about that in just a moment, but what if somebody is, uh, so let's say somebody is over 65 and they're still working, would they be eligible for Medicare? That depends on their employer. Some uh -huh. employers will allow you to remain on your insurance through the employer, so most people will enroll in Part A, which is your 
hospitalization, mm-hmm. which is what we pay for our FICA, <laughs> is what oh. pays <laughs> okay. for your Medicare Part A. And then when they leave their job and are no longer under the umbrella of their employer insurance, right. then they can enroll in Medicare Part B, which is the medical insurance. Oh, okay. So yes. it just depends on the employer whether or not they allow them to remain on the insurance. So it sounds like there's just no hard, fast rules, although there's certain guidelines, and you try to adapt to the person's needs. Exactly. Well, and that's, that's what good. we're here that's for, good. to help them navigate that. That's excellent. So I wonder how many people are aware of that. I mean, are people, do people realize this? Or do they know they can come to you for guidance and help? And, hmm. and, uh, well, I hope they know they can come here for guidance. Um, hmm. We'll help them in any way we can. Well, we're telling them right uh, now. Right. So, all right. So get in here. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Okay. And also, um, you know, a lot of employers, whenever people become el- Medicare eligible, mm-hmm. um, their benefits coordinator will tell them that they need to go and apply for Social Security or Medicare. Okay. So. Well, um, s- some companies are smaller companies, and they may not have a benefits coordinator. So can right. the owner of a company come to you and say, look, I need help with my employees. Can you guide me about what I can do? Or Yes. You can we, help them with that. We can. We will. I will actually go out and make a presentation or talk with the employers in like an insurance meeting mm-hmm. or, or anything like that. All right. That's very good. Let's talk about open enrollment. And we've talked about that ad nauseum till you know, <laughs> almost every day we talk about it uh, on TV. But uh, let me ask you, it starts in October and it goes through December yes. 7th, December 7th. Uh, but now we're going to end it here on December 6th because why? Because that's a Wednesday? Well, yes. Here at the Peggy Seeger Center Center, we actually do the open enrollment walk-in clinic mm-hmm. Monday through Wednesday mm-hmm. from 9 until 12. Um, and the sixth is on the Wednesday. That explains However, it. However, um, I'm in the office every day, so if there is someone that missed that deadline, we will be here to assist okay, them. Okay, so you try to work with them as well, even though it, they may not be able to get here during those hours. Exactly. Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday from 9 till noon. Mm-hmm. Now, why would anyone want to change the plan they're on now? Well, because... The drug companies mm-hmm. uh, or the insurance companies um, sometimes change their formularies, mm-hmm. or as an individual, maybe your needs have changed. You're on different medications. What's a formulary? A formulary. Help me out here. Come on, <laughs> speak English, lady. <laughs> a formulary is the drugs that a insurance company has that they will cover. Oh. In other words, um, they they have all categories of illnesses, uh-huh. and they have certain medications that they will cover for that illness. Okay. While there may be a hundred different medications for maybe heart problems, maybe they only cover twenty five of those, oh. and the doctor puts you on something that's not covered. So you want to look at your plan to see if there's a plan. That will cover that, that is medication. Co- oh, okay. So they all have different medications that they cover, and some are the same. So that's a formulary. That is a formulary. I got it. Okay. <laughs> now, moving on. Uh, so they will change because things change, could change during the year. Exactly. Okay. Well, that makes sense. And another example why people would change is because of the company that they're with mm-hmm. is no longer going to work with their pharmacy. Oh. While the pharmacies will accept all Medicare Part D plans, they may not be what is called a preferred pharmacy. Mm-hmm. So each plan has preferred pharmacies that they prefer to use, and the cost can be cheaper. While if you prefer to go to a different pharmacy, your cost will be greater. Okay. So as things change throughout the year, and this is not uncommon, it happens quite often, doesn't that it? That is true. It, things change, and it would behoove one who is uh, taking advantage of their Medicare to talk to you about, well, my plan just changed. Mm-hmm. Can you find a better one for me? That is correct. It's that simple, isn't it? Yes, sir. That's what you do. Yes, sir. A well, prime, that's easy. A prime example is my dad. He was on a plan that is no longer going to work with his pharmacy next year. And to stay with his pharmacy and to stay with that particular plan, his cost was going to be about $500 more for the year. Ooh. 
So we changed his plan, saved him about $500, and he's happy. Now, is that an unusual situation, or is that a common situation? That is common. Really? That yes. much different? Yes. You're mm -hmm. actually able to save people mm -hmm. that much money? Exactly. Well, that's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> I can't take credit for it. Sure you but can. I mean, take credit. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, we can't take credit for it, but it is great that Medicare did build this system that we can assist people mm -hmm. in finding something that's going to benefit them more. So, so does anyone need a, to make an appointment to come in and talk to you about this? If they're not coming in during the open enrollment, uh -huh. I do make appointments. Okay. We have people that are new to Medicare all during the year. Mm. And when you're new to Medicare, you have three months before your date of birth, mm -hmm. the month of, and three months after to enroll in Medicare without penalty. So you have a seven-month window to sign when up you're for. first becoming eligible for Medicare. You mean outside that window there's a penalty just to sign up? Yes, sir. Oh, well, don't do that. That's not good. <laughs> so when they come to you, they can just walk in Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, 9 till noon before December 6th mm -hmm. and talk to you about their plan. Now, what do they need to bring with them? They need to bring their Medicare card, mm -hmm. the red, white, and blue Medicare card. Right. And they need to bring their medications. Okay. A list or the actual medications? We prefer that they bring the medications, the medications. because we have to have the dose and the strength of the medication. Okay. And know whether they take a brand or a generic. Mm -hmm. So it's better to bring the medication with them. Okay. Now, what's the cost for them to bring something in here and sit down and talk to you about this? Absolutely nothing. You mean it's free? It's free. It's free? It's free. How do you get away with that? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's great. Well, it's just a service that is offered to the seniors. Okay. So. All right. Well, that's great. So it doesn't cost them anything. So, and you saved your dad about 500 bucks, and that's a common occurrence. So somebody could walk in here and actually save hundreds of dollars. Yes, sir. Have we ever kept track of how much money we're able to save uh, for Wayne County citizens? Um, I don't know the amount that mm -hmm. we save for the particular county. But I do know that it's millions of dollars that are saved um, for people in North Carolina mm. every year. Just in North Carolina? Just in North Carolina. Oh um, North Carolina is a pilot this year for the cost savings. Mm -hmm. So all of our um, SHIP counselors enter in our reporting system how much we save somebody whenever we enroll them in a plan or change their plan. Mm -hmm. And so they're tracking that to find out exactly how much money we, this program or helping people with this through this program saves them. You know, Selena, I would have to think that maybe North Carolina is doing something right for them to want to look at North Carolina to see the perfect example about. We uh, hope so. Yeah, about how to save people money. Mm -hmm. Well, this is great. Okay. So uh, this, this this information pad, sheet right here, you give this out to people or you mail it out or what do you do with it? We do have that. I hand it out when we do presentations. We mm -hmm. place it in different locations in the community for people to pick up. Mm -hmm. um, we also have posters and things that we send out. We have th things posted in the newsletter and in the buzz and um, Y'all talk about mm -hmm. it regularly, yeah. so um, trying to get the word out to people where to come and how to find out if the plans that you have currently are the best for you or if you need to change. And it's a free service. It is free. Free. It doesn't cost you anything. Mm -hmm. So you walk in, you bring your medications with you, and you bring your, your red, white, and blue Medicare card, and you sit down here and you talk to Selena. And you say, this is what I have now. Or do you have, can you look it up? Can you look up their plan? Whenever they bring their Medicare card in, uh -huh. um, and we put their, <clears throat> their information in the Medicare website, we can actually pull their information up, see what plan they have, uh -huh. and how much their cost, their projected cost is going to be for the coming year. And it will also give us a list of the other plans and what their projected cost is going to be. And that's how we make that comparison to see if there's any savings that can be. Okay. So how many plans are there? Are there several plans? Are there dozens? Are there hundreds? Are there, there thousands? Are dozens. There's 30-some plans. Really? Mm -hmm. 
So somebody should be able to find a plan that suits them, but not every plan is suitable for every person. That is correct. Plans may, will vary. You may have a husband and wife in the same household that have a different plan, but that's because the plans are generated by the medications that you take. Okay, so a husband and wife may be on different plans altogether. Mm -hmm. Mileage may vary. So, uh, so they come in, they bring all this information, and you sit down and you look them up on the thing there, and then you can find pretty quickly Mm -hmm. A plan that works better for them. Yes, sir. Wow. And this is free. This is free. Isn't that nice? That's nice. We and they don't have to pay for any. Don't charge a dime for this. Mm -mm. Okay. So how do they do? What are they, uh, if, if they have a question, can they call you? They can call. They can come by. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's your number? It's 919-731-1608. One six zero eight. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Almost had you. I thought I had her right there. Okay, but because you've only been doing this a short while, you're not sure of the number. Right. right. So, and they can also call the ship office okay. at eight five five four zero eight one two one two. Okay. Um, most of the time, when they call that number, they will refer them to us okay. as well. So. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is great information here. Uh, this is great information. Medicare covers so many different things. They cover hospital hospital stays. They cover, uh, but it's not it's not the it's not everything to everybody. Right. It doesn't cover everything. Right. It covers percentages. Right. Is that right? Medicare covers eighty percent after your deductibles. Mm -hmm. um, you have a yearly deductible with Part B, and you have a deductible with Part A, which mm -hmm. can be per benefit period, not just a yearly deductible. So um, oftentimes people will enroll in supplement plans mm -hmm. or what they call gap plans, uh -huh. which is with a through a private insurance company where they will offer plans that cover the deductibles, the co-insurance, and things like mm -hmm. that that Medicare doesn't cover. I see a lot of that advertised on TV, mm -hmm. quite a bit. Right. But now that's through a, an independent commercial insurance company. That I mean, is this is correct. you actually pay for this. Yes, sir. You're paying for this. You pay yes, a sir. monthly fee or something like that, or that a, is a subscription true. rate. Yeah. And we do on the Department of Insurance website. We can pull up a list of the insurance companies that are available to offer the different plans. We put in the individual's age whether they're male or female, mm -hmm. and if they use tobacco. Mm -hmm. And it gives us a list of those insurance companies, and it kind of gives a general price. It's not a this is the price kind of thing, right. because some of the prices can vary by mm -hmm. zip codes and things like that. Um, but it tells if they have a application fee that has to be paid when you apply with mm -hmm. them and those kind of things. So yeah. um, it's, helpful. it's a helpful tool to it help people. Like it. And, you know, it shows you the differences in where insurance can vary. Sometimes there's a $100 difference in the cost for the same kind of plan. Really? Um, just depends. Oh, that's great. So you're actually able to help them with that as well. So they have the option of going to uh, a supplemental insurance plan with an insurance company or paying the 20% out of their own pocket. That is correct. Okay, I think I know what I'd do. <laughs> okay. Because well, and there's also Medicare Advantage. Um, what is that? The Medicare Advantage is, it kind of takes the place of Medicare. You have to have Medicare to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan. And these companies are contracted with Medicare to offer your insurance. They have HMOs and PPOs mm -hmm. um, that work kind of like, Maybe your employer insurance worked, where you have co-pays when you go to the doctor. Um, you have out-of-pocket expense, and um, they do. Some of them offer some incentives like um, dental care, a little bit of eye care. It just depends on the um, the plan. So Medicare Advantage is not it's not Medicare, right? Is it a step up or a step to the side, or is it like a supplemental plan? Well, like I said, it's sort of like what you would carry with an employer. Oh, okay. So, like your employer plans. Mm -hmm. It works a little differently, but it is something where you have 
um, co-pays when you go to the doctor, mm -hmm. not the 20% like you have with Medicare, but some of them you may have a 15 or $20 copay when you go to the doctor, mm -hmm. and those kind of things. So those are the kind of things we can counsel people on as well. Is there a premium due with that? Do, do you pay for that? Well, what you pay for, to Medicare for your Part B mm -hmm. goes to them. Mm -hmm. And some of them do have an excess charge other than that. Okay. So that's the kind of thing okay. we look at when we do those comparisons. So it's either that or you then have a supplemental policy through an insurance company. And that's, that would be two different things, wouldn't it? You have a supplemental policy mm -hmm. with original Medicare. You cannot have a supplemental policy with a Medicare Advantage plan. I'm so confused. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. I'm telling I'm glad you're here because there's a lot of questions. And uh, unless mm -hmm. you're in the business, you probably don't know everything you need to know about all this. And that's why Selena Beeman is here, right? Yes, sir. So well, you... it's something we learn. We're learning every day. I've been doing this since 2006 when Medicare Part D started. Ah, okay. And I learn something new every day. So you've been doing this over 10 years now. Mm -hmm. All right. Are you from here? Where are you from? I'm from Wilson. Are you? I grew up in Fremont. Okay. But well, I that's lived, okay. Well, I you're close. Wilson. You're not like from Chicago or Kansas no. or anything like that. <laughs> Yuck. So you're from here. Mm -hmm. You're 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 a home girl then. Mm -hmm. All right. That's good. But people can come in and see us, but I also do counseling over the phone. Okay. Because oftentimes uh, we are kind of a melting pot here in Goldsboro yeah. because of the base. Yeah, exactly. And people are calling and saying, well, I have parents that live down in Florida. And as long as they have their Medicare information and their drug information, we can do a comparison and I will actually mail it to them so that they can review it with their parents and then they can ah. uh, seek help elsewhere. So this well. is not just, you don't cover just Wayne County or just North Carolina. You can advise people all around the country. Yes, sir. Because when we put the information into Medicare, we put in your zip code. Ah, so it's okay. going to pull up the plans that are available in your zip code area. Wow. This is great. This is great. All right. 731-1608. Yes, sir. Is that close? That is it. 919? I've got it. 731-1608. Selena Beeman is here to help you with all your Medicare questions and your any other questions you might have. You're a, you're a, a source for sources. Uh, try to be. <laughs> a source for resources. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Selena Beeman, 731-1608. And I thank you so much, Selena. Thank you, Wayne. It's great. We'll do this again. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. And we are back on Sunrise with Wayne and Pat. Hope you're doing well today. This program, by the way, let's bring you up to date here. Program runs every morning at 7 a.m., Monday through Friday. The program then repeats at noon, and it repeats again at 5.30 p.m. Yeah, that's exactly what it does. Every Monday through Friday. So we're glad you're with us. And if you can't catch it on TV, on the cable channel 10, we're also on cable channel 99, AT&T Uverse. We're also on YouTube. We're also on Facebook. That's and, correct. In fact, that, that Facebook page, we're on every morning at 7 o'clock on Facebook as well. 7, 7.05. But anyway, that's where we are. And if you can't catch us on TV, you can get us on Facebook and or YouTube. Okay? To get to the YouTube page, go to WayneGov.com and click on one of the links where you find a red dot, and I'm not going to start pointing to where it might be. But there's a red dot in the upper right-hand corner, a little tiny red dot. It's actually a YouTube icon. It doesn't look like a YouTube icon, but that's what it is. A little red dot in the upper right-hand corner. That takes you straight to our channel page on YouTube. Okay? Go ahead. Let's talk about these bricks we have right here. I'm glad you brought that up. I want to clear something up. Please. There is a fundraising company called Bricks for Bucks. And apparently we're working with the, these people and they are the ones who, from whom we order these bricks. That's right. All right, now these bricks will be placed at the new Maxwell Regional Agricultural and Convention Center in a large courtyard area there. These bricks are, will be inscribed with text that will include, that can include your name, the name of your family, the name of your loved ones, the name of a, 
uh, deceased family members in memory of the, uh, of your of your parents' names, uh, family uh, or favorite movie star. I like John Wayne. Yeah, Pilgrim. Also, uh, you can put your pet's name on here. You can put your uh, uh, anything that you want to put on here. They come in two sizes. One is a is a four by eight. That's this size, four by eight. Uh, the four by eight, however will be a red brick. We're only able to inscribe in red, but this shows you the size, okay? In red, three lines of text here. Uh, this is $125, this one right here, $125. The larger... have your company's logo actually on this 8x8. Eight eight. Now that's only $500. Now here's another nice part about this is that this will be at the, the Maxwell Center. Thousands of people will see your name, your company logo, will see a message that you've left. Uh, thousands because it'll be right there in the courtyard where a lot of people will be entering the building. There will be functions and activities held right there in the courtyard and at the same time They'll see this, and this is not something that's painted on. This is actually burned into the brick. So it's there for good. It is there for good. And this size, $125 for three lines of text. This size, $250 for six lines of text. Or your company logo for $500. Now, there's an issue I want to clear up of something that came up last week that we talked about this and see here's the thing there's a company that we were working with to to get the, these bricks done and it's a fundraising company this is all they do it's called bricks for bucks now each of those words ends in an s bricks for bucks okay bricks is ending in an s that's made into a dollar sign and the bucks is also ending in a dollar sign. What they're trying to tell you is that, hey, we're a fundraising company. We're going to help your organization raise money for something. Now, well, the problem with that is that the bricks four bucks, the four is the number four. And the number four right beside that dollar sign looks like it's four dollars. Now, that can be very misleading if you're not looking at it or thinking clearly about it. So that's what's happened. There have been some people who said, well, you know, that... Is it $4 or is it $125? Well, it's $125 because we can't afford to have this done for $4. Not for $4, and this is a permanent thing. It's going to be fixed to the ground out there at the Maxwell Center. So want to clear that up for you. These bricks are not $4, but that's, that's just the way it is. It's, it's not $4. It's $125, $250, $125, $250 for a 4 by 8 and an 8 by 8 okay? Is it, do I need to add anything more to that or have I run that into the ground? Well, we won't give the, um, you can give call, um, Carol Bowden a call at 919-731-1445 yeah. or go to our wangov.com website and click the link that's on under current topics about the brick fundraiser and your yeah. order form and all is right there. Order we form. have a PayPal account right. that you can pay right there as soon as you put your order in. You know, and that's exactly right. Go to our WayneGov.com website. Yes. Look, for the, uh, look for the pavers ad that we're running there, and it will have a link to this company. I can't remember the name. Well, right. once you click it, it takes you right to the order form. It takes you right to the order form. So you yes. fill out the order form and boom. But they are very unique. Oh, yeah. Affordable gifts for Christmas, birthdays, yeah. anniversaries. Yeah, they make great gifts. Great gifts. Yes. Imagine giving your, your parents for Christmas a certificate that shows that their, their name will be immortalized in bricks there at the, at the Maxwell Regional uh, uh, Agricultural and Convention Center. I mean, that, that's a nice gift. Or that your kids, your, your youngsters' names will be right there on these bricks. It's a right? good way to step into the max. Step into the max. Boy, that thing's coming along. It is. It is really coming along. The, um, and we'll have more video for you coming up pretty soon on that, but uh, they're working inside really uh, a lot. The landscaping's being mm -hmm. done. This week is a the week they're going to have the, uh, the final pavement 
Yes. Down. There's a last layer of pavement, pavement that you have to go down, and that's always the last thing to go down on the outside because they don't want to, you know, to scar it up with moving equipment around and everything. But that's exciting too. They got that last layer going down this week. That's right. Oh man, that's it's coming along. And we will also have a promotional video for the Maxwell Center. Will we? Yes. It's that time that. to start booking. Oh yeah, you guys got to get booked. And so for you to be able to hold your events at the Maxwell Center. Keep your eye out for the booking promotional video and learn how to get in contact with James Way to book your event. Get booked. That's right. Do it quickly. I mean, because they're oh, yeah. events uh, fill up quick. You know, I'm really surprised at how quickly it is moving along. Yes. It is moving along very quickly. Yes. Even before, before James was hired, there were calls coming in saying, That's hey, right. how do I get how do I book? You know, are you guys ready to do this? And uh, uh, and uh, so we got somebody in here very quickly. Man, he this is this guy. This guy James Wade is a <laughs> he is a dynamite. He is yeah. really taking the bull by the horns here, and he's uh, he's doing a great job getting this thing off the ground. He's actually got bookings from a year a year out. Some of them, some of them yes. are a year from now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so hey, get with the program. Yeah. So if you uh -huh. if you were company. Uh, is having a gathering, a business meeting, or something like that, or your family is having a reunion, or you want to put together a car show, a boat show, a motorcycle show, a, uh, an alien spacecraft show, that's the place to do it right there. It depends on how big your alien spacecraft is. Yeah, we'll think about that one. Hmm, okay. Anyway. You get the idea. Yes. We've got some new announcements that we're going to run through really Thank quick. Goodness. Um, the Wayne County Public Library has put this out for high school seniors. Here's your chance to apply to some great colleges and universities for free. And it's only during this week, the 13th through the 17th. And, and the following schools, they are wavering their usual application fees. So if you go to the Wayne County Public Library Facebook page, you will see their link. WCPL.org? Yes. WCPL.org is their website. So they're waiving a lot of these application fees. Yes. And Great. if you need any information, you can contact the College Foundation of North Carolina. And their website is... Hmm. What's their website? www.cfnc.org. CFNC. Yes. Charlie Frank Nancy Carroll is one way to remember. Dot org. Dot org. CFNC. Yes. Oh, thank you. Attention all swine, poultry, and dairy farmers. The EPA is now requiring everyone to report am ammonia emissions. That's the EPA C E R C L A. E EPA CERCLA is requiring everyone to report ammonia admissions and you must do this by tomorrow november 15th it says to please contact our office the Which wayne is, county yeah. soil and water conservation district wayne county soil and water and that number is 919-734-5281 extension 3 734-5281 extension 3 Thank you. With the holidays coming up, let's shop local. Yes, please. Um, and shop small. And that means that the 25th of November, which is the day or the Saturday after Thanksgiving, they will have small business Saturday downtown. Really? Yes. Wow. Starting at 7 a.m. Okay. 7 a.m. until 12 well, 11.59 p.m. Oh, okay. Midnight. Yeah, midnight. Midnight. Yes. All right. That's so, great. So, once you get through all your Black Friday sales, mm -hmm. you get up on Saturday morning, come downtown, shop local, shop small. Yeah. I believe in shopping local. You, when you need something, do everything in the world you can to find it locally. If you can't find it locally, then go somewhere else out of town, out of the county, on the internet. But buy it local first. And if you don't think it's here, you can always contact the Chamber of Commerce. That's absolutely right. Boy, that's good advice. Or have their um, Chamber app. Yeah. 
Yeah, go online to uh, WayneCountyChamber.com. WayneCountyChamber.com. You can download the Chamber app. And that has so much information on it. But I would really like to see people start buying as much as they can locally. This comes, if you support local business, it all comes back to you. What goes around comes around. You ever heard that? What goes around comes around. What goes around local business comes back to you in tax dollars, in revenue, in wages. It comes back to you. Support Wayne County business. It just makes sense. I don't understand why that doesn't make sense. It does make sense. I'm through. You done. I'm done. We're going to just briefly mention this. Um, for the 2018 NC Pickle Festival, I know that's a little ways off. That is a ways off. Um, but they are looking for chili cooks. The chili cook-off is April 27th and the 28th, and they're looking chili cooks. Really? Yes. Looking for chili cooks, huh? Yes. So if you are interested, please give Jamie Grady a call at 919-920-9351. Okay. Okay. Jamie Grady. Yes. Okay, one last thing. Don't forget our blood drives. Oh, we yeah. We have two that's on Thursday. That's right. Two Thursday. One at the Goldsboro High School, one at the University of Mount Olive. Goldsboro High School at 1030 Thursday morning. University of Mount Olive at 1130 Thursday morning. Give the gift of life. And you can't take that saying lightly. You cannot take that lightly. When you give blood, you are giving the gift of life. Think about that. All right, and there's some next week. I'll tell you about those later on. Well, if you missed it on um, North Carolina Symphony, maybe you can make the Nutcracker. The Nutcracker will be yes. at the Paramount Theater December 1, 2, and 3. That's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. 7 o'clock on Friday, 7 p.m. on Saturday. Curtain time for matinee on Sunday is 3 p.m. Tickets range anywhere from $13 to $18. And you can get tickets or ticket information by going online to goldsboroparamount.com, goldsboroparamount.com, or you can call 919-583-8432, 583-8432. And then you got your Wizard of Oz, 1939, starring Judy Garland and a ton of extremely talented actors from way back when. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Dorothy got swept up in a, in a tornado and uh, landed in some odd place with the yellow brick road and all that. She soon discovered a scarecrow and a and a tin man and a cowardly lion, right? Well, yes. Cowardly lion was played by a wonderful actor and dancer named Burt Lahr. Now, all three of these people had other parts in the movie. And that's why they look so familiar to Dorothy, because they were actually people that worked on the farm. All right? And people that worked on the farm. So when Burt Lahr was the scarecrow, what other part did he play in the movie? Well, when the movie first opened, you saw Dorothy riding along on her bicycle and all this with Toto in the basket. And, uh, and later, uh, as she approached the farm, she was, uh, uh, she was addressed and she was met by a fellow by the name of Zeke. Zeke was uh, Bert Lahr's second part. And I mentioned it was an, a biblical name that started, uh, that had been shortened, and it was in the latter half of the alphabet that would have been the Z, okay? Yes. Ezekiel, or Zeke was the part, the second part played by Bert Lahr in the movie The Wizard of Oz, 1939. Boy, that just wore me out right there. Anyway. <laughs> oh, boy. Is that all you got? And for the life of me, I, uh, 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 huh? Is that all you have? I, I, I guess, I guess, yeah, I think that's it. That's it for me. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and watch us on YouTube at Wayne County Government. That's right. And until tomorrow, I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Pat Garner. And this is Sunrise with Wayne and Pat.